fix this. I love Zoom. Uh, so we got our shirts, and there's a couple different ways that you can really tie dye uh, just a generic shirt, or if you have a pillowcase or a pair of socks or a bed sheet that maybe you want to throw up on the wall that you want it to do. Um, there's so many different ways to tie dye, whether or not that's going to be prepping the tie dye, the different dyes that you use, how you're curing the, the dye after you're done doing it. Um, today we're going to probably be going a little bit more of the, the simpler, easier route. Um, where we're going to be using just our shirts, a bowl of water, our food coloring dyes, some rubber bands, and then if you have any plastic gloves or want to use them, you certainly can. Otherwise, your fingers might get a little colored and stained, um, but also they'll look really cool, so that's never, never the end of the world. Um, typically, with, with tie-dye, you, you want to have a couple different things. Today, we're going to use water. But in the future, if you want to try something different, you can use uh, what's called soda ash, or you can even use vinegar. And what those substances do when you mix them with the water, which is where we're going to soak our t-shirt in before we actually color it with the dye, is it allows the, the fibers in the t-shirt to actually be a little bit more absorbent. So it'll hold that dye a little bit better, um, and it'll make that color last a little bit longer. Since we're using food coloring today and just kind of a water solution for those of you that just have water, um, the colors are still going to be super bright once we're done and the shirts are washed at the very, very end. Um, but that being said, if you, if you wanted to explore with vinegar or soda ash, those are going to be the two things that are going to really make a shirt last forever. This shirt that I'm wearing uh, was made with vinegar um, and it's probably about 10 years old after being washed a million times. So you can kind of see that how oh, it's still pretty, pretty light and vibrant, um, but this is still going to work just as fine. As far as getting stuff prepped, you can certainly, we have our food coloring dyes. Um, if you are using these today, you can use them directly from the bottle if you would like. You can just kind of squirt them into the shirt as we start to make our designs and whatnot. Um, that's gonna make the color as vibrant as it could be. I think just being mindful of uh, the size of these is that you just don't wanna squirt the entire bottle into one area unless your favorite color is blue and you just want one big blue splot on your shirt. Um, but what I have here as well, and you can do this too, is I put about two thirds to like half a cup of water in a glass. And what you can do here is take some of the, the actual food coloring here, put 10 to 14 drops of food coloring. It's going to dilute it and it's gonna, still going to have a pretty robust color on it. But what it's going to do is allow you to save a lot of this food dye. So you can do this in the future, um, but it's also going to allow you to kind of pour over your shirt. So if you're a less intricate tie dyer and don't want to be really specific or detailed and kind of just want to make a colorful, colorful shirt, um, you can either put it in a squirt bottle or a glass with the diluted solution itself. So the first thing that we're going to end up doing is we're going to want to get our shirts and whether or not we wash them beforehand in the washer dryer um, or if you're able to soak them beforehand, the most important thing that we're going to want to do is just actually soak the shirt as much as possible, and then we're gonna end up wringing it out. So again, I just have water here, so this will be pretty simple, but sometimes you can use that soda ash, which will really make the colors look cool, or the vinegar, which is gonna make those colors look um, a little bit brighter and last a little, a little bit longer on those shirts. So once your shirt is pretty soaked here, you're gonna to wanna to wring it out so you can get as much water out of there as possible. What you're doing here is basically starting to break those threads and expand them a little bit so they can begin to kind of like open up and when you put the dye on the shirt, those threads are going to grasp all that dye and kind of suck it in. So then when the shirt dries, basically those threads are coming back to its original form and the dye is stuck in the thread itself. Um, but we do want to make sure we get all of our excess water out of here. Okay, so now that we have a drenched shirt that is ringed as much as possible, it is time to figure out what we want to do for design. So there's a couple different things that you can do. I think for me, I clearly I like the spiral design. I think that's a fun one. Um, you can do a classic tie dye where you, you just basically we're going to roll this up and I can show you how to do that. Or we can do kind of what I like to call kind of the mountaintops, which is a, a design I'll show you. But um, if any of you out there are interested in this spiral design, the best way to do this is to lay your shirt flat out on the table. And then you're going to want to find 
a spot on the shirt where you want your spiral to start. So this one is pretty centered, right? It's kind of like right in the center of the shirt. So that would be probably right about there. If this is where you wanted your spiral to be, what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of do that with your fingers, put it right in that spot, and you're just gonna begin twisting the shirt, spiral-like. And so we're starting to, you can see this, you're starting to see that spiral. I don't know if the shadow can help. But it's starting to spiral a little bit the entire shirt, right? So once we have that spiral together, you can start to bring in the edges, the sleeves, the bottom of the t-shirt. And that's basically gonna be your, uh, your canvas for the tie-dye itself. So if this was the design that you wanted to go with, now it doesn't need to be perfect, right? Like this is, that's the whole point of tie-dye is you just, you never know what it's actually gonna look like until you get to the very end, that's half the fun. Um, but if this is the design that you wanted to do, and you have your spiral here, this is when you're gonna to wanna to take your rubber bands and do everything that you can to keep that shirt in that spiral formation. So with the spiral design, it usually takes three or four different rubber bands. Again, it does not have to be perfect. As someone that has minor OCD and perfectionism, I always get frustrated with this, but then I realize it's always gonna be beautiful. So now that we have this, it might not look like that original spiral pattern that we had, but you can kind of see it here that more or less is, there's, a, there's something going on there, right? So at that point, you can begin to tie dye this however you like with your colors. So whether or not you were gonna use the water to dil dilute the solution a little, or if you're just gonna go directly with these and squirt them where you would like. So with the tie dye design, or with the spiral design, sorry, you're gonna see these rubber bands. What I like to do with the rubber bands is actually use those as markers in actual sections. So sometimes it's hard to say, well, where am I putting this color on the shirt? Again, doesn't necessarily matter unless you really want to get into it. But what I tend to do is I'll break down each of these sections. So the rubber bands all crossing each other are like little triangles, little squares. And what you can do with that is use that as kind of a marker. So you could do one of those sections as a color, another section similar, and then start to make your way around. The other piece with the spiral is that now that you've spiraled it, there's gonna be some pretty deep folds in there. So what's great about the food coloring is you can really get in there and you, and you can do both sides at the same time. Um, and it doesn't have to be soaked, right? You don't wanna completely soak the, sh the shirt with color. What I like about tie-dye personally is that the white is a really, really great contrast on the colors. Otherwise, if you really, really soak this, it might come out as kind of like a dark purpley brown mess because all the colors are running together. Um, so that is gonna be the spiral design. Does anybody have any questions? I forgot to say, if you have questions, you can use the, the raise your hand function or throw something in the chat. I'm more than happy to answer those. I did wanna show off a couple other designs. So we'll unfold our shirt here, start back at the base. So another design, which is just gonna be kind of your classic, is really, doing whatever you want with your rubber bands. I think the best thing about tie-dye is that there's really no wrong way to do this when you're making your original design. But some folks like to do a design where you can fold the shirt and then begin to roll it. Maybe you roll it this way, maybe you roll it this way, roll the sleeves, maybe you roll those in different directions. And what you're doing here, the goal is to create all of these different lines, because each of these lines is going to be a fold in the shirt itself. But when you're rolling it like this, this is when you're going to want the actual rubber bands to be as tight as possible here. So if you're doing the rolling method, whereas the spiral method was you just want the rubber bands to kind of hold the shirt in place as you're doing it. But with this one, you want the rubber bands to be as tight as possible because now this rubber band where this is sitting, that's really gonna help create that white spot, that kind of in between the colors section of the t-shirts. So this one's really fun and probably gives you the most kind of creative access because you're able to kind of create whatever design that you want. Um, so if this is the way that you want to go, the key for this one is just rolling the shirt in any direction, the sleeves, the collar, the bottom, but just making sure that those rubber bands are actually going to be as tight as possible on there.
With this one, the same goes with the food coloring. So it's just a matter of putting this wherever you want. Um, being mindful of colors. As someone that's, I wouldn't consider myself an artist. I'm probably terrible when it comes to picking colors for rooms and stuff like that. But being mindful with dark colors against other dark colors and how that might run into kind of a really dark looking purple or black. But if that's something that you want to do, absolutely that might be the direction you want to take this. But what I like to do is to have light, lighter colors next to darker colors so they can contrast a little bit better so it pops out on the shirt overall. So that is going to be your rolling method with the extremely tight rubber bands. We will unroll this. I'm going to show you one more design, which I would say is one of the cooler looking ones, in my opinion, but can be somewhat more of a challenge. But if we lay our shirts out like this, flat again, and similar to the spiral design, the way that we started that, what we're going to do with this one is we're going to kind of use the same kind of claw methods here. Um, and we're just going to dig into the shirt and start to clump it up. So see that I'm clumping it up, but I'm not spiraling it. I'm not putting it in any really direction. What we're trying to do here is just elevate the t-shirt. And I called, I called it the mountain ridges because if you get really close and down and look at it, it kind of looks like mountain ridge. It also looks like a brain. For those of you that can relate to that as well, if that's more relatable. So what we've done here is we've kind of more or less just bunched the shirt up, right? We haven't spiraled it. It's kind of the same method. But the idea here is that this is going to be a tie-dye design that's going to come out as kind of a really cool, just like not dots, but kind of trippy looking um, spots all over the t-shirt that kind of bleed into each other it to have a fair amount of white in it as well. This is a really, really cool design. It's really fun if you can really get a lot of color into it. Um, and the same deal with the spiral is that as long as your shirt is kind of bunched together like this and all together, this is when you're going to want to start to put your rubber bands on. This one can be a little bit more difficult because there's no real structure to it. Um, but as long as you're getting that surface area to be exposed and you have all these various ridges, this is where we can start to actually hold it together. And so you'll see there's no real, I would say, pattern to this. It's just kind of crumpling it up. It's just a really fun, easy one. It might be a little difficult to keep it all together at some point, uh, but this one makes a really, really cool design. This is probably going to be the design that I am going to do with y'all today. And what's cool about this one is I would say it's probably the most, let's say, accessible for diversity in patterns and color. And the reason is because you can see what I'm doing right now is we have the original clump design. And I'm starting to get into kind of that lengthy kind of rolled up design that we were originally were looking at. And hey, why not? Maybe we roll up the end here. And we do a couple different designs with one shirt, making sure our rubber bands are super tight. So this is one of those ones that like really, you're not really sure what it's gonna look like until it comes out, um, but it's always going to be cool. As long as you're putting colors in there, it's going to look pretty sweet. So one more rubber band for us. We're gonna start dying. Put that there, cool. So now that we have our design, rubber banded, that is going to be our palette. So we now have our rubber bands, our shirt that is, let's say, moist. I know people hate that word, but it's what this shirt is. So now that we have our colors, I'm going to probably go with the straight food coloring. I'm not going to dilute today. I think I really like the thick, vibrant colors on this one. So the key for these, let's say let's start with a red because we can see that one pretty well is this just going to be kind of a squirt bottle, right? So it has like a rubber grommet on top. It'll come out pretty quick if you squeeze it quick, but that's okay. You also notice on my table, I have saran wrap. So if you're doing this on grandma's antique table that you borrowed and brought to school or have at home, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, but maybe you don't like the table, um, which is also fine. Sorry, grandma. But at this point, we're going to just kind of start to, to use our rubber bands here. You can see the individual sections. 
these really don't mean anything at all other than just being a nice kind of guide for your eyes and to kind of see into the t-shirt itself as far as where you can put the colors. Sometimes it helps if you're someone that wants to do a pattern. So let's say we wanted to do blue, yellow, red, green. You could continue blue, yellow, red, green, blue, yellow, red, green. Or you could be someone that just wants to go red all the way across, flip it this way, go all the way across. Maybe you get your fingers dirty a little bit and open the shirt up and start putting color on the inside. That's when this can get really fun is let's say this section we covered in red, but originally we put, we put blue in there. And so the inside of it's gonna be a totally different color. Again, can't really mess this part up. It's really just about getting dirty um, and getting the shirt colored. So at this point, We'll start off with a little red. You'll see since the shirt is a little wet, this looks like blood, so I'm sorry I even chose this one, but um, you'll see I'm not doing this. There's no real rhyme or rhythm, nothing perfect going on here. Just get my colors. So we got that red. Next we'll go with this like yellow orange. You'll see that start to soak in almost immediately. And that is because the shirt is a little wet from the water that we had rinsed. We'll do some blue, contrast that brighter color. And one part that might help out at some point too is just to remember to continue to roll the shirt. A lot of the times I've seen people kind of, this is your palette, you color, 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 and then you get to the end and you realize you didn't do one of the sides, still makes a really cool looking tie dye. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more complete and wrapped around the entire shirt, um, that might be something to consider. So with this blue, the only color I haven't used is green. But again, I like the contrast. So I'm probably going to go back to my orange yellow here. Again, I am just squirting it, folks. There is no real system in place here. You're going to start to see that these sections really see there's white in there. That's okay. That's that's intentional. I think it's really nice when you start to have a lot of white in there. I like that contrasting with the actual color itself. Um, but maybe there's a section on here. We can use our green to do it. That we really want to be green and we can make sure that it's as green as possible. And that just means that green might be one of the primary colors of the shirt once it's all said and done. But we'll do that. Sometimes you can just leave one of the sections open like this. See, it kind of skipped over there. Maybe we just leave that white and we have a nice white area through that. Um, for those that are interested in a more kind of advanced tie dye, something that you could explore at some point is if you've ever seen those tie dyes that have designs on them, like a heart or a smiley face, um, who knows, uh, a fish logo, gosh. There are so many things that you could do with tie. There is so many impressive ones out there, but the easiest and the trick to what those ones where you want to create kind of a design is if you had laid your shirt out on the table and you took a pencil or I would say, or a pen that you know is going to come out in the wash. Uh, what you can do with that is actually draw the design on the shirt where you want the design. So let's say if you wanted to draw a heart, you would draw the heart anywhere on the shirt that you would like. And then at that point, you are actually still going to use the same method to roll up your shirt to any design that you would like. That was going to be the one that we did right now, or the spiral, or anything like that. Because once you roll it up, you're still going to see when the shirt's tied up with rubber bands, you're still going to see those markings from the pencil um, that actually have the heart design. So when you see those markings, you can actually color intentionally within those lines. So eventually when the shirt is done and you get out with it and you wash it and you rinse it with cold water, you're actually gonna see that color specifically within those lines, which makes that kind of heart pattern, which will still kind of have the tie-dye effect of the, different, of the different whites and colors that are spontaneous. So I'm kind of getting to the end here. I think we need to finish off with a little bit of a brighter color. I like when the tips of the shirt are pretty bright. I don't know why. This looks cool, in my opinion. Maybe you like darker tips, and that's fine too, but um, okay, and then maybe we do red here. 
All right. And you're going to have a lot of ink on your table too when you're doing this. And it might upset you and think, oh my gosh, there's in my green, there's all this red because it was from the table. That's totally fine. It's, it's typically the original ink that you've squirted on the shirt. That's the really important one. Um, that's the one that's going to be latching onto those threads and then that, that additional ink will most likely kind of wash out at that point. So believe it or not, after we have just finished our tie dyeing and our coloring, this is the point when you can take it, you can look it over, do areas need more ink. You'll see that there was a lot of white in this original piece, but now that we've been sitting here and it's been soaking in the dye a lot, it's actually starting to kind of cover the entire area. So it will start to expand a little, which is nice. Um, but this is gonna be the point, like I was mentioning earlier, where you can open up the shirt. So see right there, this is our yellow orange section, but there's a lot of white in there. And if we wanted to, we could start to pull these different threads away and actually start to put the, the tie dye inside those threads. Right now, I think I'm just gonna leave this alone. Again, I like the, I like the white, I like the uh, kind of the purest when it comes to that. So this is our shirt, right? Let's say that we are done with coloring it from what we believe we're going to do. At this point, you're going to want to take either a Ziploc bag, you're gonna to wanna to take some saran wrap, whatever you have that's gonna be able to seal in this shirt will work just fine. And in the tie-dye world, one of the most argumentative points, I would say, is how long do you leave that shirt in the bag before you take it out and begin process number two? And the correct answer is that there isn't one, but there are different tiers to those lengths. So for someone that wants maybe not as vibrant as a shirt and maybe just really wants their shirt as soon as possible, you're still gonna want this to be in a bag and sealed up for at least six to eight hours, I would say. If you want your colors and you have the time to do it, and you want your colors to be as vibrant and as bright and as colorful as possible, just closing up my ends here, making sure it's sealed. Uh, you can have this in the bag for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, it's not really gonna make a difference. Uh, the ink will at that point pretty much have done exactly what it needs to do. So it's really up to you and your schedule and kind of how you want your shirt to look. I would say if you can wait the 24 hours, it's absolutely worth it. All right, so now we have our shirt log in a bag. And the next step is to put this somewhere. It doesn't need to stay out of light. It, it's not gonna grow or anything like that, but a cool dark place, as they say, might be useful or just somewhere where the dog's not gonna chew on it or someone's not gonna take it because they see the design and you did such a good job that they want it. But you're gonna let that sit out for 24 hours. And then at that point, you're gonna unwrap the shirt and you're gonna take it to a sink that hopefully nobody cares too much about. What's good about this is we're using food dye, so you could use your kitchen sink and you'd be okay. Um, but once it's been in the bag for 24 hours, you're gonna to wanna to rinse this with cold water as much as possible until the colors stop running. So you don't have to worry about the dye actually beginning to ink or anything when you're rinsing it with cold water. At that point, the dye has done its thing. So what you're doing now is using that cold water and rinsing it through the sink as much as possible. So you're just getting the excess dye out of there that couldn't latch onto any other um, actual threads of the shirt. So once you've dyed and gotten to this point and rinsed it as much as possible, just keep rinsing it in cold water until the water is clear. That's gonna be key. And then the next step is to be washing it in the washer and dryer. And I I think the most important piece to this is don't wash this with any other clothes. I would say if you have the ability or if you have, are having a tie-dye party with friends, put all of those shirts in the same wash, but don't wash this with a pair of like khakis or a white t-shirt because there still might, might be a little ink that's going to run off from it. So at least for that first wash through the washer and dryer, um, you're going to want to have this be by itself. And then once you dry it, it's ready to go. You unfold it. You see what the design looks like. Um, and you got yourself a tie-dye. So that's, uh, that's kind of tie-dye 101, folks. There, there really are a million different types of way to do this. Um, I think one of the most fun ways is just hopping on YouTube and typing in intricate tie-dyes or crazy tie-dyes and to see some of the designs that these folks come up with 
Um, when you have a medium that's something like a, a bed sheet, for example, like a perfect square or a tapestry, and you can work with that, you can make some really, really cool designs um, that sell for thousands and thousands of dollars. So hey, this could be a profession uh, for anybody out there looking for a new gig in a time where we can't necessarily leave our houses too often. Um, you never know, but I definitely recommend checking them out on YouTube. Um, I don't have a, a whole lot else for folks. I hope that was fun and useful. I don't know if people have any have any questions or tips, or if you know anything about tie-dye that maybe I don't, you wanna share with the group that might be useful. Um, always open to kind of hearing what, what folks' experiences are, or what their kind of tricks and tips are at the same time. That was great. Thank you, Jeff. Of course, my pleasure. How yeah, do you Jeff's... get the dye off your hands? <laughs> yeah, how do you get the dye off your hands? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I gotta, I gotta go back to work myself, so it's gonna be a shirt and tie and, and these guys. That'll be fun. <laughs> um, I also wanted to encourage everyone that once you're done with your tie dye and it's out of the dryer, we would love to see it. Um, so you should post it on social media and we'll share it with the rest of the community and just use Bristol, hashtag Bristol DIY. That's what we're gonna use for the whole semester um, for all these different programs that we're doing outside of the box. Um, but if there's no questions, Jeff, thanks so much, man. That was awesome. Cool. Yeah. That was fun. Awesome. awesome. Um, and hey, if, you have, if, if you have friends that couldn't make it, we did record this session and we're going to post it. Um, so we'll let folks know once it's posted as well. So that, and if, and if any of you need to come back and, and, uh, get another lesson from Jeff, um, it'll be, it'll be in the internet world forever. All right, Jeff. Thank you so much. Thanks, folks. That was fun. We'll see you around. Thank Come you. back. See y'all. Bye, everyone. <laughs>